now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It's 5.06 on a Tuesday morning in your nation's capital. Thanks for joining us. We've got a uh, loaded, loaded situation for you. Coming up at 7.05, a brand new movie about Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa. We're going to talk to the producer of that film. At 7.35, uh, the great one. Mark Levin, his brand new book, it's officially out today. I hold it in my hot little hands. The Democrat Party hates America. You know, we've been asking Mark to be a little more subtle with his titles. So he's trying to, like, you got to really read between the lines on this one. <laughs> what is the he trying to say? Democrat Party hates America. We'll have that conversation with Mark Levin at 735. 805, Representative Andy Harris of Maryland will join us. And then at 835... Brett Dasovic, he's a, we talked to him before. He's the pop culture crisis host over there at the Timcast Media Empire yeah. on YouTube. Talking to him about uh, the writer's strike and the whole Russell Brand thing. Mm. You saw that. Russell Brand, these allegations about Russell Brand and sexual misconduct and sexual harassment that I believe date back over a decade. Yeah, right? media just now paying attention um, when he right. becomes a family man. Because just now he sort of had a change of, you know, perspective mm. on life and yeah he's kind of a media critic too interesting how they're just mm-hmm. now attacking him and youtube just uh, demonetized uh-huh. him based on the allegations which is kind of wild i mean that's that's it's why a lot wild. of people are it's, it's not wild it's so predictable it's, it's brazen this is how this is. is how these things work and again i mean the, the, these allegations could be true but in a world where you know uh they're supposed to be uh, you're supposed to have your day of court you're supposed to be able to meet your accuser you're supposed to be innocent until you know it's really funny guilty. you know it's funny larry yeah is that they're showing all these clips of him acting that way. So it was public. He was doing right. it. And he was the toast of London. Oh, they loved him back then. They Remember, he him. did the remake of Arthur. Oh, yeah. And he was married to when Katy he was, Perry. He, he was, was just a rogue bad boy. When he was acting out on on camera, nobody said a thing. It's only now when he's become critical of pharma. And I, look, I'm not this conspiracist. Right. But it really is fascinating to me. Yeah. When you become, you know, famous for essentially becoming anti-establishment, that the establishment goes after. Oh yeah, the, they 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 stand. Well, in fact, we're going to tell you a little later a story of, about Tim Ballard. Tim Ballard, the guy who was the feature of the Oh yeah, Cry, for, Cry of Freedom uh, movie, and he just announced that he's considering running for Mitt Romney's Senate seat. And yeah. suddenly there are all these allegations. Yes, yeah, suddenly out there of you that. go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he is denying. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about that as the morning goes on. But let's uh, uh, circle back and revisit the story that we hit yesterday, the new rule changes in the United States Senate that allows uh, – well, it's really to accommodate John Fetterman. It basically, John Fetterman dresses like a hobo. Yeah. Uh, there's no two ways about it. And so rather than actually say to the good senator of Pennsylvania, we have standards here. This is – you know, senators always love to walk around this town preening like little peacocks about how important they are and how the Senate – is the greatest deliberative body in world history, right? You hear that all the time. Yes. It's the single greatest deliberative body. Hard to deliberate when you're wearing, you know, jogging shorts and a hoodie. Yeah. And I've, I, I've hesitated to say this, but I'm just going to go ahead. Whenever I see John Fetterman, I can smell the body odor. Oh, I know. You know Through the, the television, I can you know, smell it. You know, this is the thing. This guy, apparently, it makes him depressed yeah. to put a suit on. You say that to a woman who's had to wear heels. Her whole life, okay. You want you want depressed, right. you know. Let's talk about my feet Great at point. the end of the day, okay. Yeah. This you just know, makes me sad. It's just them. gross. It's just he he is, and just the idea of this person who clearly cannot fulfill his role, and now the entire Senate is changing its rules to accommodate essentially him being a big baby about things. Yeah. Um, here, here's what somebody needs to say to John Fetterman. So this, this, you know, this makes me this it increases my depression and my anxiety, and it's part of you know this is my comfort place to be dressing in these clothes. Listen, I have a child on the autism spectrum. I understand how clothes are a thing. It's like I don't want my son to run for Senate. I don't think he should. I don't think we should change the rules to accommodate my son. Because right, you're a good family member who kind of understands yes. what's, what's good for him. And right? he has certain limitations. And guess what? Being in the Senate is probably not going to make you happy either. Someone needs to go to John Fetterman and say, this isn't about you. Thank you. Thank you. You're not there as a senator to fulfill your own personal interests and your own personal needs and wants and desires. You're supposed to serve the people of Pennsylvania, and they deserve better. 
They do. And and look, I, I think it's really important too. I mean, I again I think I think this is this whole thing is ridiculous. But when you look at him perform, there was an interview with him yesterday where he couldn't even really complete a sentence. He also has complete disdain for, you know, the body he serves in. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's disrespectful. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 again, it goes back to how his constituents ultimately are being treated here yeah. badly. And now the rest of the United States, there are so few things where there are rules and standards left in America. And now they've destroyed, the left has destroyed the last one. And one of the great ironies here is that the Democrats have been the ones that have pounded themselves on the chest and preened in front of cameras about how they are the only ones left in this town who have respect for the right. institutions. <laughs> right. Where's the respect for the institutions, the, the, the sacred institutions of the United yeah. States federal government? And here they're just taking the institutions and throwing them in the gutter. Uh, so that the senators can look like they're sleeping on a tent at Union Station and they crawl out from their own filth and then walk onto the well of the Senate and yeah. give their vote. Uh, and by the way, and, and here's my other favorite part of this whole story, is that it only applies to those elected officials. It doesn't apply to their staff members, That's their exactly. comms people, it's their legislative aides, their interns. Their, and what about the reporters? I, I want to hear it from the righteous, liberal, Female reporters who work for media companies who will still have to wear, you know, they have to dress to a certain standard. They can't show up in yoga pants. Right. Oh, and give a it hoodie. time. Give it time. Yeah. They I mean, everything's will. going in the crapper at this point. Well, let's check with John Fetterman because he was on MSNBC last night and he was asked about um, some legislative agendas coming out of the House and what might happen. You know, if the House comes up with impeachment articles, for instance, and deliver it to the Senate, what will happen? If the House comes up with a new budget, which they're on the verge of doing, how will the Senate handle it? So, Here's John Fetterman's response. You've already got 17 no votes in that House Republican caucus saying we're not passing anything. What what do you think's happening here? Yeah, you know, like I I, truly I was I was very proud of my colleagues, you know, because they're really about governance. That's what it is. And on the other, the the House, the the, whatever they call themselves, Team America or whatever they call themselves. (laughs) I just like, hey, I just like bring your vote. You know, otherwise, you know, they need to go hump a different leg. Uh. Respect for the institutions. Uh-huh. The, the House or Team America, they can just go hump a different leg. Eh, there you go. Yeah. This is where we are now. Yeah. Just, just you know, again, when everybody says Orange Man bad and those mean tweets and he's so crass and he's so profane and I just wish he was a little bit more respectful. They love this guy. They celebrate him. And as Beverly Hallberg, our friend Beverly Hallberg, uh, who is frequently on this program and also is a media consultant, she responded to this video and said, don't be surprised when someone inappropriately dresses down that there's also a lack of respect in other areas. And that's exactly what we get. And I just and I say this not because, listen, I dress down. I just, I had to wear a suit and tie for 40 years. Of, well, not for. 40 years, but until I was 40, I had to wear a suit and tie. I have now specifically pro- chosen a profession where it doesn't matter what I look like. Right. I mean, I sometimes I dress worse than John Fetterman. I'll admit <laughs> That's it. That's not true. It's not true. John Fetter. No, no, no. You're, Sports okay, shorts and a hoodie. Bad. It's not that Ew. bad. No. So I'm not trying to be some sort of, you know, uh, smarmy little uh, preening. Uh, I said preen Elitist. a lot this segment. You know, it's not, yeah, it, not, it's yeah. not about that. Yeah. What it is, it's the hypocrisy. Don't 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 sit there and tell Somewhere. me how you hold these institutions sacred. Real, real quickly, someone on Twitter yesterday, and I'll try to find it and retweet it, showed a picture in the 1940s of um, spectators at a baseball game, yes. right? They were all in suit and ties. And then they showed John Fetterman heading into the Senate floor, <laughs> right, in a hoodie and sports shorts. Exactly. That tells they, you a lot about our culture. They used to dress better to they, go to a baseball game. Yeah, these things are... Than John yeah, Fetterman dresses that's right. to the Senate. That's right. So there's been some thought that Republicans should show up and, and dress like hobos one day just to prove a point. Like have a dress like John Fetterman day. Do you think they should do that? I do not. Do, do we want to see Mitch? Sense of the news. Live from the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Stream us live online wherever you are, whenever you want. Download the new WMAL app today. All right, moving on, the story we uh, just alluded to, Tim Boward. Now, Tim Boward was the focus of the Sound of Freedom film. And uh, this is a man who uh, quit his job to help track down the most evil people in the world, people yeah. who are engaged in child sex trafficking. He's become the face of this movement. He and the actor who portrays him, Jim Caviezel, right? Yeah. Um, he used to work for Department of Homeland Security, and he was just on Capitol Hill last week. 
Uh, while he, uh, the day after he was testifying, Mitt Romney announced that he won't be seeking re-election for the United States Senate. Yeah. And appearing on our pal Sean Spicer's show, you know, he's got a show. They're calling it the Sean Spicer Show. Yeah. I mean, got it. What marketing genius got millions of dollars for that one? Uh, he revealed that he uh, is very seriously considering running for that U.S. Senate seat that Mitt Romney is vacating now. And this is this is why people used to run. They have a specific issue they're concerned about, and they're going to yeah. take that to the U.S. Senate. So, I and mean, this is a pretty typical story. He's a Utah native. Yeah. Uh, he's a member of the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints. It's like he's got a lot of things that you check off the list mm-hmm. when you're running for Senate in Utah. And then, two days later— U.S. anti-child trafficking activist resigns after sexual harassment allegations. That's oh, Russell Brand all again. It is. Tim Ballard, whose work was dramatized in Sound of Freedom, has left the Operation Underground Railroad organization. This according to The Guardian. A Ballard, a former advisor to the Trump administration. Gotta, there you go. Got to throw that yeah. in there. Who is reported to be exploring a run for the U.S. Senate seat in Utah, resigned abruptly from the group in June for then unknown reasons. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, according to Vice, so they're putting this together, right? You get right. that? You they're see connecting how that, the dots. He might have, you know, he might have left because, hey, this movie is exploding, and now yes, my life is completely and different, I'm and I'm considering gonna, a right. Senate run. Blah blah blah. Yeah. According to a report in Vice, Ballard invited female staff and volunteers to accompany him on an overseas missions, playing the role of his wife. Then would coerce them into sharing his bed or showering together by telling them it was necessary to fool traffickers. Uh, uh, Vice said it had spoken with many of the women. One, it said, received photographs of Boward in only his underwear showing off a number of fake tattoos. Another was asked how far she was willing to go to give ins- uh, to save enslaved children, et cetera, et cetera. In a statement sent to The Guardian, uh, the organization said Ballard was permanently separated from the organization he founded in 2013 but would not comment on the specific allegations, et cetera, Right, so et cetera. they have no proof of anything happening. They have nope. a lot of allegations um, but that's enough to smear this guy. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Tim Ballard, uh, the gentleman in question here, then issued a statement yesterday. He affirmed his commitment to the church, to the Mormon church, and then he said, um, it's been alleged that an LDS church spokesperson issued a statement about me through a tabloid that is often hostile to people of my faith. That would be Vice. Yes. Um, my church has not publicly verified the statement's authenticity. Oh, yeah, part of and what I'm skipping is someone from— Some unnamed person from LDS actually put out a statement saying, oh, yeah, we had accusations about this guy, too, and da-da-da. Unnamed. My church was not publicly verified the statement's authenticity. We were also highly suspicious about the timing of such a statement, given its close proximity to Mitt Romney's announcement that he's retiring, my own public comments about my prayers about future plans, and the fact that the LDS church does not engage in political activity. In any event, nothing will change my core beliefs. If someone within the church did release this statement, I'm absolutely confident that the right people will step in and ensure that proper due process is followed as the rules of our church dictate. Um And he goes on to say that he's not going anywhere. Good. You know, I will say Tim Ballard is a disruptor. He really is a disruptor. We see this march towards normalizing pedophilia, towards normalizing, introducing children to very complex sexual concepts very early on. Ballard is a disruptor of that march well, forward. So. And it is marching forward. It is very yeah. disturbing what we're seeing in public schools, what we're seeing in public libraries, what we're seeing out there. And he is, he, again, he's making people aware. He's a major threat to that movement. Yeah, and and he has seen the worst of it. Yes. I mean, we can't even, and don't want to no, even no, no, come don't close wanna, to imagining what Tim Ballard has seen firsthand in his rescue efforts. And he says in his statement, evil pedophiles will stop at nothing. And they have allies in government. That's true. In the media, that's true. Yes. And in big corporations, yep. that's true. And even in public institutions. I think that's an even. allusion to the church, his church. Mm. They continue to lie and attempt to destroy my good name and defame my character, and they will never stop. And that's true as well. People who go down these roads are very brave. They really are. Now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. It's 536 here on O'Connor and Company, and we are uh, rocking you through your Tuesday morning at 7.05. We're going to speak with the producer of a brand new movie about Mother Teresa. It's called Mother Teresa and Me. 
and uh, very excited about that one. 735, Mark Levin, his brand new book, The Democrat Party Hates America. 805, Representative Andy Harris of Maryland. And then at 835, we're going to speak with uh, Brent Dasovic. He's the um, pop culture expert there over at the Tim Pool megalopolis there yeah. on youtube <laughs> he's got all these different videos yeah. he's in charge of the pop culture crisis show it's very funny and we'll talk about the uh, russell brand drama with him and uh and jennifer garner giving mm. her shoes to a homeless person yeah yeah while paparazzi is standing there how nice <laughs> everyone can hear you rolling your eyes across <laughs> the entire D. am not a jennifer garner fan <laughs> um the justice department uh, you know, let, let, let's face it, this this Justice Department does nothing, has continued to do nothing about Antifa. They continue to do nothing about the, uh, the pro-abortion terrorists who have been vandalizing churches. And setting them on fire. Setting them on fire since Roe v. Wade. Yeah. They've done nothing about the... Uh, Attacks on the Supreme Court The people justices. who continue to illegally protest in front of Supreme Court yeah. Justice homes and their private residence and on their right. homes. That's right. In violation of federal law, and Merrick right. Garland looks the other way. Uh, not to mention, you know, their inept handling of the corruption at the highest levels well, of our government. Well, don't forget that sentencing recommendations for some of the BLM protesters that destroyed property and hurt people. Yeah. The recommendations from the prosecutors are like, let them off. Haven't, let them off. Haven't they suffered enough? Yeah, Besides, they their cause was righteous. Yeah, they're, they're, yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's where this Justice Department mm-hmm. is. And it's not just the political appointees under Joe Biden. Sadly, it's a lot of the career attorneys who have been there for, you know, over a Correct. decade. Let's see who was president in a decade. To go, oh Barack Obama. That's right. right. Um, well, they found the real enemy, and they focused their energies on the people who really need the book thrown at them and thrown behind bars. And of course, I'm talking about 73 year old Jean Marshall and 74 year old Joan Bell, who were just convicted yesterday for. Are you ready for this crime? Blocking the entrance to an abortion clinic. They now face 11 years in prison. This is the Justice Department's priority. This is this is just terrible. I mean, as Kevin Roberts, the president of Heritage Foundation, said, this isn't law enforcement. This is political war. And this is using the weapons of the Justice Department and the FBI to wage that war. That's 100 percent what this is. Um, The three pro-lifers who protested at a Washington, D.C. abortion factory in October of 2020 have been found guilty on federal charges by a jury. Well, of course they were, because this is what you get in the jury pool in the District of Of Columbia. course, you can't get a, yeah, you can't get a fair trial. In by the way, the second they were found guilty, they were put into custody. They weren't, immediate, right. they weren't like, okay, you're, you're on your own reconnaissance until you're sentencing. No, 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 no. Yeah. You go straight to jail right. until we have your sentence ironed out. Uh, The Justice Department said they traveled to D.C. to meet with a third person and to participate in a clinic blockade that was coordinated and streamed live by another co-conspirator on Facebook. Co-conspirator. Whose language is that? Yeah, they entered the clinic and set about blockading two clinic doors using their bodies, furniture, chains, and ropes. You know who else does that? Climate activists who block roads where people are trying to get to the hospital with children. That's right. Where ambulances can't get through. And you know what happens to them? They're celebrated. That's right. And then when a sheriff shows up and says, get the heck out of the road, that sheriff is investigated. Isn't this interesting, Larry? Yeah. Like, it's it's okay to do this kind of stuff for certain causes. What happened is back in the 90s, there were a couple of um, violent acts at abortion clinics carried out by... uh, misguided but just evil uh, bombers uh, yeah. pro pro life terrorists are the only way to describe them and and they were awful acts and they made all pro life people look bad and so of course during the Clinton administration there was a knee jerk overreaction in congress you know this is the problem you've got a couple of incidents where you've got these little, little um uh, there was a bombing attack at one abortion uh, factory, and I think that there was an abortion doctor who was murdered. Yes, there was, yeah. By a pro life mm-hmm. thug, an evil, disgusting, despicable human being whose cause may have been righteous, but certainly tactics have nothing to do with our uh, and in no way are aligned with what we would consider to be a pro life position, obviously. 
Uh, and then you've got people of Congress who step up in front of cameras and say, we have to do something. We have to do something. We have to do something. And no, you don't always have to do something. We have a law against bombing. We have a law against murder. They violated those right. laws. But right. no, they had to do something. So what did they do? They came up with the FACE Act. The FACE Act was a federal law supposedly to protect abortion clinics, to protect the people who work there and to protect the people who were going there from violent acts. And, I, and the FACE Act has now, to keep people from being murdered or bombed, has now been reinterpreted to such a level that these three 70-plus-year-old women are facing over 11 years in jail because they stood shoulder to shoulder in front of an abortion clinic, as you point out, Julie, just like climate activists do on a daily basis. You know how we've been examining how the left re, you know, redefines things and uses certain words? I think we need to stop calling them abortion clinics and call them baby killing factories. You know, I I 100% agree with you that these terrorists in the uh, because I don't like to call them pro-life terrorists. I like to just call them terrorists. These okay. were truly domestic terrorists who were bombing clinics and were, or were trying to harm the people inside. We are now seeing that on the left. They are bombing cl- pro-life organizations. That's right. They are uh, putting graffiti and vandalizing them and breaking windows and trying to scare and harm the people who work there. I would say they are also trying to kill the people. They, you know, they set these buildings on fire. They don't know that someone isn't in there. Um, and so, the the terrorism that we saw in, in uh, you know, bombing these abortion clinics was terrible. And every everyone on the pro life side condemned it. Yep. We do not see that. In fact, we see the Department of Justice absolutely ignoring the same behavior on the left now. Yeah. And then they lie <laughs> and then about like, it. And then locking up these people. And we saw right. this. We saw this also with the the pro life the man who was praying and pushed the man out of his way. Because right, of that course, guy was and he was arrested by the this FBI. Is... Thankfully, a jury acquitted him yeah. because it wasn't in D.C. These women are going to jail. All right, uh, so that's the latest. There, we'll see what happens with these women. It's despicable. Coming up, Gavin Newsom standing up for the Democrats. You know, stop saying that we want abortion right up until birth. Gavin Newsom's going to clarify the Democrats' position. It's as clear as a glass of muddy water. <laughs> It's 548 now, and, uh, you know, Democrats and their pals in the media continue to say, we heard saw this yesterday with Kristen Welker and Meet the Press, no Democrat wants there to be abortion, that no one is advocating for that, right? Right. So Gavin Newsom, Dana Bash, <laughs> asked Gavin Newsom to clarify this, and, well, here, here, here's your clarity. You have probably heard more and more Republicans, including Donald Trump, who just over the weekend accused Democrats of supporting abortion rights up to and after yeah. birth. <laughs> Can you be clear about... What does that mean, uh, after birth, well, abortion after birth? It's made up. It's a political... Well, can you just be clear... Now, of course, we here know that that's exactly what... Kathy Tran in should, Virginia... Maybe she should talk to Governor Northam. They were Governor right. Northam, who explained we're it very We're just going to lay him on a table. And then we'll have we're a gonna conversation. We're going to talk to the parents. We'll keep him comfortable, and yeah. we'll have a conversation yeah. about what to do next. What conversation? Well, we're we're going to keep him comfortable on a baby. steel tray. Yeah. 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 Thank you. About <laughs> what limits on abortion should be. Uh, it's a political thing. People are not seeking abortion. But what is the what is the policy? The what should it be? The policy, it's not up to Donald Trump or me. It's up to you, to women, that have to bear that responsibility uniquely and distinctively. And the reality is it's a canard. It's a political frame. It's total BS. And it's exactly where they need to go because they know they've gone too far but there has to on be the other some side. Kind- let me just talk about your state of California. Yeah. As you well know, there is a law in books that preceded you uh, that says that you can have an abortion up until viability, which is about 24 weeks. That's right. Is that something that you that's, support that's personally? That's in statute in the state of California. That said, there was a constitutional amendment that we placed on the ballot that, that has some nuance in it. And so that's an area that's being adjudicated in public opinion and likely will ultimately be adjudicated. So is in the it courts. the government's role then? I know you said you said it's it now. This goes on for several minutes, and she keeps saying, "Okay, so so give me the number of weeks. What is the number of weeks? If it's not right up until birth, which you adamantly says is fake, it's a canard. It's not. So what is it? What at twenty four weeks? Is that right? Yeah, let's just. He won't do it. I know. He can't do it. Th- it shows and, that this is their vulnerability. That's right. 
And you heard him just say, yes, the statute in California is 24 weeks, but we just had a constitutional amendment. And he said, there's nuance, and that's nuance. being adjudicated. Yeah. Would you like to know what the nuance is? I would is like to know what the being nuance is. being adjudicated? Let's, let's talk Here's about the that. nuance, okay? Gavin Newsom just said real nuance in this constitutional amendment that he helped craft and he helped put on the ballot. And yes, Californians passed this by a two thirds majority vote. Mm. Here's the nuanced language. A yes vote supports amending the state constitution to prohibit the state from interfering with or denying an individual's reproductive freedom, which is defined to include a right to an abortion and a right to contraceptive. So if the state can't interfere there you go. with the right to an abortion, then the state can't stop a woman from having an abortion at 40 weeks. That's right. Period. There's no, no Where's the nuance? Yeah, what? What nuance? <laughs> that, is, that is the least nuanced they, statement they, they, you will ever hear. We know that the Democrats are very skilled in this sort of word salad of never answering a question, sort of turning it around, kind of, you know, being vague nuance give me a break yeah there's no nuance there and dana bash god bless her i mean you know she, she dana of all of the liberal media reporters and she'd make no mistake she is a liberal reporter in this town uh she's right down the street here she's in bethesda uh she does put out once in a while i will always have a soft spot for dana bash because she's the one who. I, kept, I wish you could see the look i'm giving larry i know but she's the one who pressed anthony weiner during the anthony weiner andrew breitbart crisis i will always remember that she was the one the only one on the steps of the capitol saying are you denying that that's you in the picture Mm. Do you know for sure that that wasn't you? And I mean, she kept pushing Anthony Weiner. So I, I do want to give. Yes, her, let's praise Dana Bash a, a little bit more for, for being a nor- for like what, like a like being a broken clock. What's five? It's every five years. So here's Dana trying to get an answer. I think she's yeah, trying God to get bless, an answer fine. from Gavin Newsom because she's like, give me something. I'm to sorry, work but this is just so, this is so us <laughs> that like conservatives, when a reporter does what a reporter is supposed to do, we're You're like, right. oh my god. Credit to get to fine. Dana Bash for actually doing her job. I just want to be clear because. <laughs> People are going to be listening very carefully to what you're saying. Yeah. I just want to be clear. You do not believe it is the role of government nationally or or state government to have it. to have any limits on the books I, legally. The state that, of California has long believed in viability. I've long believed in viability. We went forward with a constitutional amendment that's created some questions as it relates to this. Questions. My, my point is no one wants to see late, late term abortions. No one's out there. No one wants to that. see it. Have they, has he heard of Maybe you should talk to Kathy Tran, yeah, Northern Virginia representative who yeah. a couple of years ago tried to pass through a bill that would have allowed abortion right. 40 weeks. So, listen, if, if Democrats and people in the media don't want Republicans to say that they want it to be legal for there to be abortion right up until birth, then maybe they should join us in making it illegal for there to be abortion right up until birth. Until they do that, yeah. then it's Real what simple. they want. It is exactly what they it want. It is what they want. It's 5.53.